I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com. Thanks so much for joining me for this advanced cold process soap making tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this amazing soap. It smells fantastic. The fragrance is brand new from Brambleberry's Fresh Citrus Collection. Candied citrus fragrance smells, well, yes, like a candied citrus, but the main notes are like lemongrass, honey, and bergamot and orange. So if you like citrus, this fragrance is for you. If you've never made cold process soap before, this not your best first recipe. Go back to some of the first cold process soap recipes that I've taught on the, on the videos below, or you can get a couple of my books and read the first few chapters. This is definitely an advanced recipe because it uses embeds. We do a little bit of actual frosting piping, so it's a multi-step process. For this recipe, I'm using Brambleberry's Lots of Lather Quick Mix. This is actually, I've been making soap for almost 30 years, and this Lots of Lather Quick Mix is literally the recipe that I started making and loving when I was like 16, 17, 18 years old. And now Brambleberry sells these pre-packaged for you. It's all mixed up. And so with something like this where you have just a ton of steps, I love using a quick mix because there's just less weighing, measuring, and less prep time for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Obviously safety is no accident, so we're gonna go ahead and suit up for safety. So that means gloves, that means eye protection. For this recipe, I'm using Brambleberry's 10 inch column mold. I love it because it's got this really great interlocking system, so the soap doesn't leak out. It's pretty stable, but you know what? If you've got an extra set of hands at home when you're getting ready to make this, you might wanna ask them if they just kinda come and hold while you're pouring, just to be on the extra safe side. And I've got my oils melted. It's my lie, my fragrance is already completely measured out. Colorants I'm using, I'm gonna be using titanium dioxide from Brambleberry.com in the entire batch, and then sunset orange mica from Brambleberry.com, which is a really great color. It is a little bright though, so I'm gonna be putting titanium dioxide in my entire batch to help get that perfect kind of peachy, orangey citrus color. I'm gonna pour my lye water gently down the shaft of my stick blender just to help prevent any sort of bubbles. And then going to get, just to a pretty light trace here because I'm gonna split this between two different batches. So now that I'm at a nice kind of thin to medium trace, I'm gonna do one full teaspoon of dispersed titanium dioxide. And when I disperse any of my colorants, it's in, it's usually one teaspoon of color into one tablespoon of lightweight oil. I'm whisking in my fragrance right now. And of course, since it's a citrus fragrance, it performs pretty well, but we still wanna start at a fairly light trace. Now I'm just gonna pull off a little bit of this white soap into my easy pour container. So I'm just gonna eyeball it, but really I'm going for just about 300 milliliters, just enough to give our kind of orange a, a little bit of contrast. And then now our sunset orange mica, which has already been dispersed, is going into the big batch. I'm doing a full one tablespoon of this, and again, it's the full one tablespoon of the dispersed colorant. And I'm just gonna whisk this in, get a good orange color here. Mmm, that's so pretty. And now, and now it's time to put my white in. And this is just a little bit of white. It's just to provide just a teensy little bit of contrast. It's not, it, it's not a full kind of in the pot swirl, but it does provide a nice amount of contrast in the finished embed. I'm just gonna give this a really quick swirl. Definitely not over swirling. I just want it to be a little bit more swirled in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just pour. And again, if you are feeling like you have unsteady hands, go ahead and grab someone to help you steady this mold. Have them suit up for safety, of course. And I'm gonna pour all the way to the top. This recipe makes it really, really, really full. But we want our column to be poured so tall because it needs to fit into the totality of our loaf mold. So now I'm gonna put this out of the way and get ready for step number two. So I obviously made this earlier, and this is a multi-day process, you guys. So when you're making this, make sure you're doing, giving yourself a good three or four days to make this, because this soap does take just a little bit of time to harden up in this mold. And so I'm just gonna slowly unmold it. I do love working with the silicone. You just 
the soap releases so beautifully. It is so shiny and it's fantastic. And you might have a little bit of sort of kind of cleanup to do because, because of those channels, right? But first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of check to make sure this fits in here really well. Perfect. This is the Brambleberry 10 inch silicone loaf mold. It's fantastic to work with. That's also pretty shiny. Now I'm gonna clean this up really quickly. So you can just use your fingers to clean this off. You can use a knife to clean it off, um, kind of whatever you want. You're just going for a really smooth look. And quite frankly, you could always just kind of embed this way from the side so this, wouldn't, this seam wouldn't even show. But we definitely want to get that off of the soap. The soap is still pretty soft, so you can just kind of work the edges off like that. And then again, when we embed, we'll embed like this, so that way the seams are actually inside the soap, so no one is gonna see these seams anyways. So now it's time to get started to make our base batch. The first thing we're gonna do, though, is just a little bit of prep. And this is just our frosting piping bag. But the key to getting this frosting piping bag to actually make little kind of leaf shapes is to actually cut it into a point and that kind of makes the leaf end up working. Um, it just makes a leaf shape, it's really cool. And I am just doing the prep right now before I get my gloves on and before I get my safety on. So it's just a little point. Um, and remember, you can always cut more off, but you can't put more back on. So make it a little smaller than you think you're going to need. Now I'm gonna suit up for safety. So gloves and goggles, and I have my lots of lather quick mix already measured out, my lye water already measured out. The additives for this, we're using poppy seeds as well as titanium dioxide just to whiten up that entire batch. Obviously gonna be using that candied citrus fragrance oil, which mm, smells so good. And then for our leaves, just gonna be using a little bit of green chrome oxide. And I've got that already mixed in as well. And before we get started, I just wanna mention I have a little bit of wax paper out because I am going to be testing the thickness of my kind of soap frosting for the leaves before I actually start piping it onto the soap. Just adding my lye water slowly. And of course, like almost all my recipes, especially ones that I use silicone molds for, this does have sodium lactate in the lye water to help it harden, help it cure just a little faster and give it a shinier appearance. Ooh. Now that I have a pretty thin trace, I'm going to add fragrance to the entire batch, but I'm whisking it in. And once this has been added and whisked in, I'm going to pull off about 250 uh, milliliters of soap to set aside to make my soap frosting with. Perfect. And now adding some poppy seeds and titanium dioxide to this main batch. So I'm going to do one tablespoon of titanium dioxide. And this has been fully mixed in with a lightweight oil and I have blended it to make sure there's no little clumps. And then I'm just doing one teaspoon of poppy seeds just to give it a little bit of texture and a little bit of interest, but not so much that it ends up being a super, super exfoliating soap. And I'm going to whisk that in. So whisking my titanium dioxide in, whisking my poppy seeds in, my fragrances already in. We're at a really nice, thin, very, very workable trace. I'm going to go ahead. This is actually such a thin trace. I'm going to go ahead and just do a little stick blending. I want my poppy seeds to fully suspend. I want to make sure my tita titanium dioxide is fully mixed in. And of course, I also want my orange column to have enough kind of heft and weight underneath it that it really places evenly and nicely in the mold. <laughs> I'm just pouring my really, gosh, this soap is so beautiful. I love the texture of it. It is gorgeous. Medium trace soap into my container. And then I'm going to gently place my orange embed. And when I do that, remember, we're placing the seams down the side. 
and we are also kind of trying to place it almost over to one side a little bit more than the other side so we have a little bit more space to work with our soap frosting leaves and there we go plop and Now, I want to make sure that this is also a little more even because you can see since it was such thick trace, it kind of just blooped up to the sides. So I'm just going to manipulate the soap just a little bit. So now, remember, because I'm trying to squish my soap down onto one side, I'm displacing a decent amount of this white soap. And don't worry, we're just cleaning up right now, but I'm going to clean it up with an actual paper towel so this doesn't look quite as messy but I want a little bit more soap on this side so that way I have a, a good amount of space to do my piping with. Now it's time to clean up. So I'm gonna grab a paper towel and start cleaning this a little bit. And you just wipe down the soap until you get kind of the look you're going for and the kind of more clean lines you're going for. And remember you guys, this is soap. If you didn't do this, it'd be totally fine. So now I'm just smoothing out my soap, giving myself a good base to work from and making sure that there's gonna be a good amount of soap for me to pipe onto. And remember, you can always clean up with a little bit of a paper towel if this ends up going a little bit too high on the sides of your orange embed. I did scrape my entire bowl to get all of this out, so keep that in mind when you're making the recipe that you're gonna want to scrape your bowl on this base to get the full sides filled up. Now that this is fully placed and I have a little bit more on this side to frost into, I'm just gonna check out how my green's doing. My green is looking nice and gloppy. So let's get this green going with a little bit of this pre-mixed green chrome oxide. I'm just gonna do one half teaspoon of this into about 250 milliliters of soap. I like to have a little bit of extra soap frosting, primarily because my soap frosting skills are really not that great. So it sometimes takes me a little bit more. And I'm just gonna hand mix this in and get that perfect green color for my green leaves. So adding that extra amount of green chrome oxide, which was pre-mixed with a little bit of oil, did thin my trace out just a little bit. So I am gonna hit this with the stick blender and try and thicken it up. So it's thick enough to pipe. this right now it's pretty thick and it's holding a it's kind of holding texture in the bowl so I know it's ready to go if you end up getting this too thin like and you pour it into here and you're like oh it's just not making the leaf shape just set it aside for like five minutes and then it'll thicken up when it when it's sitting there so we've already prepped this so we want to make sure that our soap doesn't gloop out the bottom I always kind of fold these bags over to give myself just a little kind of like handle to work with when I'm piping so this is fold it over and I'm just gonna glop and gloop that soap right into the bag, trying really hard not to have it come out the bottom. Now that I've got my frosting in there, I'm going to gently kind of fold up a little bit and make sure that I have a really good amount of like kind of squeezing space. And I'm gonna slowly squeeze all of my soap all the way down to the tip. And then I'm just gonna do a couple practice ones on this wax paper and just see how these look. And again, my soap frosting skills really could use a lot to, to, to work on here. So you guys can see how well this holds based on kind of the tip that we did. So that, this is really thick you guys. Like I think, I think this is gonna hold just fine. Now you guys, if the shape of your leaves isn't perfect, like clearly my leaves are not perfect right now, it's totally gonna be fine because once you cut it, it's really the idea of the leaf and the idea that this is sort of a fresh citrus grove with leaves on the, leaves kind of on the side. And you want these leaves to kind of go a little bit over on each other in the sense that like you want them to be touching. That's another thing that really helps when you're cutting 
the soap is when the leaves are sort of touching each other. That way you don't have to worry about like, oh, I have to get one leaf per bar type of thing. And this is definitely, even though my piping skills really are quite tragic, this is definitely showing, like, showing the idea of a citrus grove with some beautiful leaves. And you can always go over them again to make them just a little bit taller, make them a little more height, give them a little bit more interest, a couple more rows. I like a little couple extra rows, especially now that my piping skills are getting better the more I do this. So now this is pretty done. Um, I'm gonna do a couple, just poppy seeds on top. It's fun for a little bit of interest and uh, I really like the way it looks in terms of just giving it a little bit of texture, a little bit of vibrancy, a little bit more leaf characteristics. And now we're gonna spray with 99% rubbing alcohol to help um, just decrease the chances of any soda ash. You might still get a little bit of soda ash, uh, but it helps decrease the chances of it. So with this soap, I'm not gonna force gel phase. I'm not putting it on any sort of heat blanket or anything like that because that embed is already made and it's cold. So getting the rest of the soap to gel would pretty much be impossible. So I'm just gonna set this to the side, set it out of the way, let it sit for three to five days before unmolding it and before cutting it. Okay, it's obviously been a few days and I'm back to show you how to unmold the soap. Obviously in the ensuing few days, I did acquire a cold, but we'll get through this together. So one of the things I love about the Brambleberry silicone molds is just kind of how easily these release. And so you just pull gently away from the sides and then you flop your soap out. And I'm pushing gently from the bottom so that way I don't accidentally tip this whole thing over and break any of my leaves. So this came out perfectly. Now, moment of truth, I'm ready to cut. Non-serrated knife. And since we did a double layer of leaves, it doesn't really matter kind of where I cut here. So I'm just gonna cut straight down and push down firmly. And you could also use the multi-bar cutter for this. I just like the look. Oh, it's so pretty. I just like the look of using a, a kitchen knife to cut these individually. It's perfect. So now I'm just gonna cut the rest of the loaf and then let this cure for ah, four to six weeks before it's ready to use or give away. You guys, we have so many videos on the Soap Queen channel. If you haven't seen them all, be sure and go and review them. And if you liked this one, give us a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe to the channel so you can be notified every single time we do new videos. Until next time, I can't wait to see what you create.